This episode of All the Smoke is brought to you by the SoFi NBA Play-In Tournament. Six months, 82 games, and finally, the postseason is here. First up, the SoFi NBA Play-In Tournament. For this, the rules are simple. Win and get in. Eight teams battle to earn their playoff spot in a winner-go-home style tournament. This tournament is bound to be full of highlights, excitement, and drama. There's no better way to set the tone for the playoffs than this, so make sure you don't miss the action. Watch TNT's coverage of SoFi NBA Play-In Tournament on April 16th and 19th on TNT, True TV, and Max. Speak on your relationship with Pac. Yeah, my, my relationship with Pac was super duper beautiful. I'm gonna tell you something. Biggie and me was closer than me and Pop. But my relationship with Pop was incredible. This is, this is the moment when I knew me and Pop was really solid. While I was shooting the Higher Learning movie, me, Pac, Omar Epps, we all stayed in those Oakwood apartments, them fully furnished shits in the, in the West Coast. But this one in particularly was on Hollywood and Fuller. And um, at the time, I think me and Pac stayed on the same floor. So I would come out of my apartment, walk down the hall, bust a left and go to Pac apartment. We both was on the first floor. During this time was when a lot of the crazy shit started with Pac. Jack the Rapper in Atlanta, and he sent his motherfucking 6'4 down there, and he ended up shooting the cop, the off-duty police. Pac was staying in the Oakwood Apartments in Hollywood and Fuller. When Pac got back from that, Pac became super paro because he felt like the cops was going to be out to kill him no matter what state he was in. So he had gotten wild arsenal. He kept an MPC beat machine in the crib. And like, I literally watched him write about seven songs to the same Osley Brothers sample. And each song was about different shit. I couldn't understand that. After a while, I get tired of hearing a motherfucking beat. I don't want to hear that beat to write no more songs to it. I write the one damn song to it, I'm off the damn beat. He wrote seven songs of the same beat. The next thing that was happening to him, or that did happen to him, and we used to just build all the time and just smoke and chop it up. But the next thing that happened to him that I, I had to play a, a, a role in was before the Source Awards was on TV and before the Source Awards with the shit which, with, 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 with Suge and all of them towards Diddy. You know, at the time, we would perform off of these DAT tapes, right? So it's not like an instant replay or like the Serato where you could just press the button and shit start over, right? You got to rewind that shit like a cassette. It's like a mini VCR tape, right? It's called DAT tape. Digital audio tape. You press that shit and it goes. If you don't go with the motherfucker, you miss your placement. Yeah. So if a motherfucker press play, you just go. So Tribe had won best group award at the Source Awards at the time. And while they was doing their acceptance speech, whoever the producer was of the show, this nigga pressed Pac's dat. So it looked like Pac came out in the middle of their acceptance speech on some fuck them shit. So he looked like he was dissing Tribe because he just came out performing on the top of their acceptance speech like he didn't care that they just won the award and they trying to do their acceptance speech or whatever, that shit led to instant beef. So Tribe and some of the Zulus, they stepped to Pac and that shit almost became something. Pac comes back to LA and, and calls me and tell me, come holler at him because he know how close I am with Tribe. The world know at this point because you know, scenario and all of that shit. And we, we, you know, everybody only see me with Tribe. Or one thing or another, I'm with Tribe, right? So Pac calls me and Donnie Simpson was on BET still at the time. Yep. And Tupac, when I get to his crib, 
he just was like, yo, bro, you know, this, everything I just explained to you, he explained to me. He was like, you know, I would never diss Tribe. Like, I love them niggas. Them niggas don't be disrespecting nobody. And I'm fans of their fucking music. Them niggas is incredible. You know, they, they pressed my dad. I thought it was time for me to go, so I just went. You know what I'm saying? I ain't know what was happening with the speech and all of that. So I want you to, if you can, get me on the phone with Q-Tip so I can let them know it wasn't intentional. I got them on the phone. They squashed the beef. The arrangement was they were supposed to do something on BET to make a public truce so that the world could see them showing each other love and embrace. And I think it was supposed to happen on Donnie Simmons or with Rap City. I don't know if Rap City was on yet with Tega. That's how earlier this shit was because Donnie Simpson was video soul. He was video soul and Higher Learning came out January, it came out early 94. So I don't know if Rap City was on then, but Donnie mm -hmm. Simpson, I knew the, the he was talk running was to go on his shit. Yeah, he was, he was running, running the show. And, and the, 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 the coordination for them to get around to it didn't happen and then Pac died two years later in 96. So they never got the chance to squash it for the world. They squashed it in front of each other, but they really wanted the world to see it. Because Pac, real, real shit, Pac really was on some, he loved the East Coast so much that he was doing a One Nation project where it was a bunch of East Coast niggas rocking with West Coast niggas. Greg Nice and all of them was involved with that project. Buckshot, BDI, you know, he was involved with that project. It was a lot of New York MCs rocking with West Coast MCs under the vision that Tupac had to create this unified front and call this shit One Nation to, to settle down the East Coast, West Coast shit. You know what I'm saying? And he didn't get to see that through yet neither. I mean, them songs still exist. That project is still around. You know what I'm saying? And and I got I got I got a few of them sessions in my own hard drive. You know what I'm saying? Because I was supposed to get on a few of them songs. Um But the the point that I'm trying to make is from choking a motherfucker that wouldn't let me get my sound check done when I was in Leaders of the New School, all the way to and mind you, leaders broke up in 93. So we talking like 92, 91, this shit happened. All the way down to 94, 93, 95 even. I would say 94, 93. Him wanting me to play a role into squashing this shit with him and Q-Tip, it just, it's a testament to how much of a respect and a, and a, and a love that, we had for each other because we helped each other be solution based on shit. Like even when he got into the beef with the sound check, man, we were straining him like, my nigga, we don't want you to get in trouble over some shit that ain't worth it. We ain't never, it was never about doing shit to be advocates of creating a problem. It was always advocating to find solutions to solve problems. And that was the relationship dynamic with me and Pop and with us and Pop. And, you know, again, at that time, the mentality was different. Nobody was on some, yo, let's get on the gram and air nigga out or get on the record and air nigga out. Nah, niggas called each other and wanted to pull up and figure this shit out. Like, what's what's really good? You know, if it's going to be something, then let's settle it this way and get it over with. You know, we ain't got to, nobody got to get shot. Right. Nobody don't even got to know. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. Let's just handle it the way we going to handle it and stand on business. And that was it. And Missed them days, but mm -hmm. we still uphold those integrities and, right. and those morals and principles mm -hmm. on this side. Believe that. What is your thought? And you don't have to go too deep into it, <clears throat> but obviously kind of being neutral as far as having love for two of the main people in the East Coast, West Coast, beef, rivalry, whatever whatever you want to call it. How, how, how did you play that? Or did you just step all the way back and just watch? Nah, I, 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 I did everything that I could. I, at the time, I wasn't able to have the same access to pop. So I, I I I had no real influence in the situation with when it came to him. Like when he got around Death Row, it was different. You know what I'm saying? Biggie, I was able to speak to him. And the beautiful thing about Big is he didn't even really want to respond to none of it because he loved Pac. And true story, he had a lot of appreciation for shit that Pac gave him as gems to help evolve his way of thinking 
to become who he became. You know what I'm saying? Pac was obviously out before Big. You know what I mean? And when they got super cool, you know, he was able to give give Big some game that Big was able to apply in a real way. And he loved and appreciated Pac for it. You know what I'm saying? I think Big was more hurt than disrespected. Like he felt more hurt, you know what I mean, than anything. So it wasn't hard to have those conversations with Big because Big really just wanted it to, to, to he wanted to settle it. He didn't want to provoke it, you know what I'm saying? And it's kind of challenging to talk about it because, you know, I know certain shit that I'm not going to disclose that sometimes it's interesting to hear young dudes, you know, speak about the situation and they don't really know what they're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Like, Biggie and Pac, they had absolutely nothing to do with what happened to him. You know, Pac got involved with shit in New York that he should not have because of his desire to want to be accepted and loved by his thugs. And sometimes every thug ain't pro your movement mm -hmm. for the empowerment of mm -hmm. thugs. <laughs> Some of them gonna look at you like a burger or a frankfurter with fucking hands and feet. Yep, you gonna be a And big. you become food to them. Mm -hmm. And situations can get manipulated for you to fall into certain uh -huh. traps. Uh -huh. And unfortunately, something of that nature could have been avoided if bro just would have moved a little different. I just don't like that it ended up bleeding into it becoming this Biggie and Pac thing when it really wasn't even about Biggie and Pac. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At least not the shit that happened to Pac. The, the shit that Pac, I guess, was disappointed in was completely separate from any of that, which it was so simple and petty, they could have spoke and resolved it. So with that being said, I really wish that I was able to have a stronger influence knowing the real dynamics of this shit. You know what I'm saying? But ultimately, what we what we know now and what we have the ability to do now is keep the motherfucking thoughts and all of the ideas that they sparked as thoughts in our minds and the greatness of their legacies, we're gonna keep them shits alive forever because them dudes is both heroes to me.